Hi friends, I'm Brian and I have a special guest here today, the Ski Viking, to talk to us a little bit about the strut. Hey there, ski bunnies and powder hounds. This is my ski car. We're going to talk a little bit about some struts here. Struts and tires are critical. The whole purpose of the suspension to begin with is to allow for your wheels to travel and make contact with the ground despite potholes, big chunks of ice off of other cars, whatever it is that you're hitting, it keeps that in contact, your tire to the road, so that you have good traction. When things are icy and sketchy at freeway speeds and in tight traffic with all the other ski bunnies and snow hounds, you want to make sure that you're not changing lanes involuntarily. We'll just say that. So we're going to go ahead and change the struts on this. This is a 2003 Subaru WRX. We just call it Rex. This is going to be good. One of the reasons why everybody at the ski resort really likes doing the Subarus is because they have symmetrical all-wheel drive. Now most vehicles are like this front differential here. Watch one tire, it'll spin one direction and the other one will go the opposite way and that's normal that's what you get in most four-wheel drive vehicles you'll get that alternation between the whole rest of the vehicle but on the back end of these Subarus watch what happens when I turn the back wheel I turn the back one this way and the other one goes the same way so even if one wheels peeling out you still get a little hook up in symmetry it's like having a locker in the rear end but it helps you go around the corners fine Subarus are just awesome but you got to keep it maintained and that's what we're doing today now this is the car that i drive on a powder day when it's dumped tons of snows the worst driving conditions most people want to stay away from driving during those times i like to get out there and get up to the slopes because that's the days where the skiing is going to be the best there's nothing that beats a good powder day you get some fresh lines some good turns steep terrain you can bomb off of stuff it feels like you're just floating on there you'll just land on a pillow I mean it's just insane it's just unreal the experience can't be matched but driving there is pretty scary <laughs> for one there's a lot of other people that don't have good equipment so the strut I'm going to talk to you about today is this one right here I got a couple of bad struts and let me show you how I know so here's the two struts see if you can guess which one was leaking and which wasn't I'm actually holding this one up you touch it and it just starts to drop there's just no gas charge left and there's free travel through this portion of it. With this one, if I were to try to do that, you can see that there's a distinct difference. Here I go to push them down. I'm putting the same pressure on the two of them. You can see this one rebounds and starts coming back on its own. That's the difference between having a charge and not. This one's worn out because it's not rebounding as fast as it should and it doesn't go up all the way. It's a darn good thing that we're replacing these struts. You always want to replace them as a pair just so that you have a nice even performance. This will help with tire wear, especially on something all-wheel drive like a Subaru. When you look at this one, you can see that this is a non-factory boot. It's real floppy. These have been done before. But you look underneath, you can see that it's leaking and you can also see a bunch of rust and corrosion up at the top. When you drive on salty roads, especially when they're freshly salted, you can see that it makes a mess of your car. I mean, that's the salt and the grit and the stuff that they put down. It's terrible for your paint, don't do that. But that's what I got a ski car for. <laughs> but that same stuff, it, I mean, it's just like when you see a shipwreck at the bottom of the ocean, it just rusts it out, and that's what's happened here. Now, what happens if you have bad struts? Well, first of all, your tires just go to crap. You see, I've got some pretty good tread depth. I'm nowhere near my uh, tread depth bars. You can see they're right here. I've got a little ways to go. Uh, but you see they're really smooth. I'm, I don't have a lot of deterioration in performance yet from this strut being bad, but I have lost the charge to that strut. And the charge helps get a little bit of support. This corner of the car actually sags a little bit. I just want to give a shout out to Car Park Kings for doing such a great job with packaging this and putting the nut on the end so it doesn't stab through the box and mess up the threads. They did a great job in shipping this quickly. I mean, you can't, you can't uh, expect the carriers to be perfect and gentle, but you can prepare for it, and that's what they did. So shout out to them. So here's what happens when you go to get a new strut. You take it out, get this little wire to release, and watch what it does. Can you see how that's getting longer? So that's the gas charge of the strut. That gives a little bit of support. When you push down, you can feel how much support's there. So once that gas charge is gone from a leaky strut, 
Now your car's not sitting right. So these universal boots just did not do the job to keep all the crud out. So when we put the new struts on, we're gonna make sure to replace these. We're gonna replace the dampener at the top. That'll help us to have a good quiet riding strut, but also something that's gonna perform well too. So when's the right time to replace your struts? Do you wait until your tires are all messed up? Do you wait until you lose fuel economy? Do you wait until things are just really expensive? No, when you notice that they're sagging or that they oscillate a little too much, or you notice that your strut's leaking, it's time to get new struts. Maybe you ought to take a look at your car today. In the meantime, speaking of taking a look, let's get this wheel out of the way and see what's going on here. This is a great example of how to replace a strut because it's very calm in design. You've got just a little clip that holds the brake line in place. You've got the two bolts here and here on the strut base and then that's the bottom half is free and then you just have to pull the mount from the top. To access the top of the strut mount you have to go in through the back door pull up on the tab and then back where your climbing gear, ski poles and everything are there's a little access you can just pull that up remove the sound deadening insulation and you'll see you've got the three bolts that hold the strut mount from the top Now before I pull these two bolts out, I'm going to use my magnetic digital protractor and check and see what the angle is. I'm going to try to get this as even as I can. And it's about 0 0.58, 0 0.56, just hanging here on the lift. So I want to get it as close as I can to that by moving this in and out. But anywhere close to 0 0.6 is going to be fine. If you get on a little rust rim or something, it's going to throw your measurement off. And if your brake rotor's warped, it's going to throw it off, but this is better than nothing. So I'm going to hit the threads of this because they're so full of dirt and crud. I'm going to hit them with a little bit of penetrating catalyst at just about everywhere. It's best to do this when you first get it lifted. Give it time to soak, it'll help. And then I'm going to come in with the impact and just rip the sucker out of there. 19 millimeter on both sides in this case. What I find is that if I put a little pressure on the wrench, it makes it kick the bolt out and that helps. To get the bolt the rest of the way out, if you push in on it, like you're trying to change the camber, usually you can get them to free up. If that doesn't work, you can use a brass hammer. So now I'm just gonna wiggle these apart like that. You can see the bottom end's all free. I'm so spoiled. <laughs> so I'm all set up with an uh, impact. Now you gotta bear in mind, I got limo tint here, so it's a little dark, but there's not a lot to see to begin with. So I'm gonna get that one so it's on just a little bit. It's gonna be my catcher. So we'll pull this guy out and put him in a dish if your car's really nice. Mine's not, mine's a beater ski car. See everything drop and my catcher catch it. I've got one hand in the car and doing the nut and I'm lifting up with my right arm. Look at those guns. <laughs> and I'll pretty much just snake this sucker down. You don't want to watch your ABS line and stuff. You don't want to bang anything. But here's the old strut. Uh, but we got our insulator so we don't have metal to metal squeaky, creaky, rusty contact with this. And that's going to be maintained and salvaged. And then we've also got another one here. I'm probably going to take these and wash them out a little bit just because they're so full of dirt. We went out rallying in the desert through the snow. My brother's in town and he needed an adrenaline rush and I was happy to oblige. Look at the trail of yuck that followed the old strut. They're leaking pretty good. So another thing you want to get when you get new struts is the boot. Um, this boot's going to do a lot better job than this other floppy one did because it's the right side. And then I've got a dampener that came with the boot kit. And what that does is if I bottom out, say I'm going crazy in the desert and hit something a little faster, it's going to basically soak up all of that abuse instead of pounding through the strut and killing it. Now there's lots of ways to compress a strut, including these type that you can get from any part store as a rental. You just pay a deposit and it's free, you get all that money back. But I'm going to do this one because I like it. I 
use a wrench to illustrate there's a gap between the bottom of the spring and the cup. So that's all you need. Wow, there's nothing there. There's no, These are shot. <laughs> so glad I'm replacing these. With biscuit. You know what I gotta love about Subaru and Japanese manufacturing in general? Is they make a way for you to service their stuff. Their stuff is so stinking serviceable. There's a whole bunch of different ways that you can do this, but my favorite way is to use these Craftsman pass-through sockets. You see the socket's got a big hole in it. So does the ratchet that it interfaces with. I'll leave a link in the description for these. And then this is just a six millimeter to the inside. You can see that holds on to it pretty good. You just go like this. Now the downside of this is that you don't have anything to hold on to that with. So I'm going to put a catch basin underneath of it. That way it'll fall an inch before being caught in the spring. There you go. You can see I've got my catch basin here where I put my waste oil. <clears throat> and it just catches the strut. Pretty slick little setup if I say so myself. I mean when I say this is shot, it's just shot. <laughs> I'm lucky I caught this before it ruined my tires because when you do the Subaru you want to do all four tires at the same time. So the next thing we're going to do, we're going to throw this guy away. Is that upside down? I swear that's upside down. I swear it's supposed to be this way. Anyway, we don't care. We'll hold it over the trash can. You got these little tabs that help hold this in place. You want to save those if you can. So wiggle it, be gentle, and just kind of pull slowly to save those. We'll use those on the new strut bash out on the trash can. We're gonna wash that up. So here's how I'm gonna do these. I'm gonna do it this way because it's easier and you don't need a boot where the stopper is because it's covering it anyway and it's skinny at the top and that's typically how they go and that way the stopper creates a seal around the top. No dirt's getting in here and it keeps your boot nice and low around the base. Next thing we do is we take the take the little damper and you know you've got good struts because it's got holes to accept it. You just grab these little parts here and instead of pushing down from the top you grab from the bottom and just kind of wiggle and pull on them and it helps to seat them like that. So just put the nut on the top here and we'll tighten these up. You don't have to worry about alignment so much right now but when you let the tension off of the spring compressor you will. I've got that pretty tight. What I often like to do, I'm gonna put a little silicone grease on that just to keep it quiet. Contaminated the crap out of my silicone grease. All right, so we've got our strut all together. Our mount's good, our dampener's good, the boot's good. Go ahead and loosen this now. Be better if I got the right part number. I ordered the wrong ones. I'm the one that specified the part number. Michael's like, you want to talk to my Subaru specialist? Make sure you get the right stuff. I'm like, oh, I got this. And then I ordered it the wrong. <laughs> my bad. This mount's not terrible. There's not a lot of moving parts or bearings because it's a rear strut mount. Front strut mounts are a little more critical. Some days I feel like I'm a cartoon. You ever have days like that? I know I do. That strut tamer makes that a lot easier. There we go, ready to go back in the car. The hard part's over. Now I just need to button it back in. So when we did the top part, we were really careful to make sure that that stud, the longest one that sticks out, is in alignment with the mount at the bottom. That's gonna make life way easier when it comes time to putting this in the car. We'll shove this up into the top. So what I do first is I get the first nut on there and just spin it down and then it can hang and then go back and get your other two. I am so excited to be getting this done. I just did new struts and shocks on my other car. A little overextended for the month being December and Christmas expenses and everything. So I really appreciate Car Park Kings so kindly donating these to this cause. Way cool. Way good service too. Lots of follow up. So we've got our bolts through there. It's really not too bad as long as you know to rock this back and forth and hang on it a little bit if you need it to come down. To get the brake hose back in, you just come in from this side, push it through, and then we'll take our clip, put it in place like this. Just remember how it came out. It should look something like that. Just remember it's trying to push against it, so if it's back behind, you know you're doing something right. Just knock it down into place. Make sure it's secure. Do a little wiggle test. You don't want to have 
that get chewed up or something. So the next part we need to do is just tighten these bolts and we're good. Now if you'll remember, we set up this little gem and it was at about 0.60. All this does is tell us to get it back to where it was. That doesn't tell us exactly where it should be. To do that, you'd have to have the vehicle all, you know, some weight or something on this with the tire on. But this just gets us real dang close to what we had. We had a good alignment before, so we just want to get the same number that we had before. That's all we're trying to do here. And when I put this on, I just put it right in the stripe here. This is a whole nother video all to itself. We'll do this as a quick tip video later. But it's nice to have some kind of a metric of uh, what it used to be. And, and like I say, this shows that it's high, so it'd be positive camber. We probably want negative camber just straight up and down. But this is the way it sits on the lift. And due to the concrete and the lift and everything else, this is the number that we're going for is 0.60. Right, push a little bit harder, there we go, right about in there somewhere is close enough, right there, we'll tighten it up. So what I'm going to do is get it close to where it's got a little squeeze on it and I don't have far to go. Let's get it right in the neighborhood first. We'll hold the wrench with this hand while I push in, element 60. <laughs> It's all over the place. It's close enough. You want to see what it says? 54. That's close enough. Well, there you have it. I'm going to say it one more time. Thanks, Michael Dash at uh, carparkkings.com for shipping my struts out so dang fast and for donating them to our little cause here. So, cheers again. Uh, I'll leave some links in the description uh, to where I got the parts and I'll leave another uh, link in the description where I got this uh, little digital level from. Cheers! Thanks for watching! Bonus footage at the end! I just did new shuts and strut. <laughs> This guy here left a pretty good comment on my video that was uh, shocks versus struts tutorial. And he says, and he brought up a really valid point, he's like, those are coil over springs. Technically he's right, but when you look stuff up, they call them struts, everybody calls them struts. And what's the difference between a strut and a shock in that regard? Well, on a vehicle, when you look at the back hatch, that's a lift strut, and it's basically a support. A strut is something that stiffens or supports, and that's literally what this strut does is it supports your vehicle. It doesn't just dampen like a shock absorber, but it also supports the top half. You got the spring and everything supported against the body. This is a McPherson strut. And if you don't have a frame on your car, if it's just unibody, that unibody is perfect for this because you get plenty of room for a CV axle. Um, but you kind of have to have a unibody to have all of this support all the way around the strut tower, if you will. To make this happen so if this were to disappear poof it's gone would there be any support Would there be a change in the alignment absolutely there will all that we have down here is we have these lower control arms here and here and that's it so it just pretty much goes up and down and is basically completely supported by the strut also the alignment angle can be changed when you have a McPherson strut if you're to loosen these bolts on the back side here you could change the camber a little bit negative or positive.